Hello everyone. I'm here today to discuss inverse functions. With me, your presenter, Shannon Larsen Tinapay. In this discussion, I will cover two main points. First, what are inverse functions? And second is, how to find the inverse of a function? Now, let's move on to the first point. What are inverse functions? In mathematics, an inverse is a function that serves to undo another function. A function is only considered an inverse function if the domain of one function can be found in the range of the other and vice versa, in which the independent variable and the dependent variable will be interchanged and vice versa. Inverse functions are commonly denoted by f raised to the power of negative 1. Remember, the inverse of a function may not always be a function. Finding the inverse of a function In finding the inverse function, we apply the following steps. If the given is f of x, we replace x with y. If the given is y, just simply copy. Make sure to replace every x with y, and every y with x. Once you interchange x and y, we simplify the equation to solve for y and write it in inverse notation. Now that we have recognized the steps of finding the inverse functions, let us have an example for further understanding. Example 1. We have a equals 2, 4, 6, 8, 3, 6, 9, 12. So, the inverse of the function is 4, 2, 8, 6, 6, 3, 12, 9. As you can see, we interchange the x and y coordinates. Note that adding a negative 1 to a indicates that the solution is an inverse function. Example 2. b equals 15, negative 18, negative 10, 12, 16, negative 20, negative 8, 14. So, the inverse of the function is negative 18, 15, 12, negative 10, negative 20, 16, 14, negative 8. The exchange coordinates of x and y, then we have the inverse of the function is negative 18, 15, 12, negative 10, negative 20, 16, 14, negative 8. Do you now get it? Now that we are done with the basic problems, let us move on to the next level. Exercises different from the ones we solved earlier. Example 1, we have f of x equals 5x plus 3. Again, the first step, when we are given f of x, we change it to y. Now, we have y equals 5x plus 3. The next step is to interchange x and the y. We have x equals 5y plus 3. Now, we solve for y. First, we transpose our 3 to the left side, which makes it negative 3. Now, it's x minus 3 equals 5y. After transposing, we divide both sides by the number on the right side, so only y will remain. So, x minus 3 divided by 5 and 5y divided by 5 is equals to x minus 3 fifth equals y. Then, we write it in inverse notation that again includes the exponent raised to the power of negative 1. First, we determine the f of g of x. f of g of x equals 5x plus 3. We substitute the x with x minus 3 over 5. So, we simplify. 5 multiplied by x minus 3 over 5 plus 3 equals to 5x minus 15 divided by 5 plus 3. Then, x minus 3 plus 3 is equals to x. Next, we also determine g of f of x equals x minus 3 over 5. We substitute x with 5x plus 3. So, g of f of x equals 5x plus 3 minus 3 over 5. We simplify. 3 minus 3 is 0, then 5x remain. g of f of x equals 5x over 5. 5x divided by 5 is x. 
So, g of f of x equals x. So, this means f of x is the inverse of g of x and g of x is the inverse of f of x. For further understanding, let us have another example. Example 2. Let us have the given f of x equals 3x minus 7 over 4x plus 3. First, we change our f of x to y. y equals 3x minus 7 over 4x plus 3. Second, we interchange the x and y variables. So, x equals 3y minus 7 over 4y plus 3. To isolate the y variable, we write x as x over 1 and then cross multiply. So, from x over 1 equals 3y minus 7 over 4y plus 3, we have 3y minus 7 over 4yx plus 3x. So, at this point, in order to isolate the y variable, we should move every term that has a y variable to the left side of the equation. So, the 4yx, we're going to move it to the left side and the negative 7 to the right side. So now we have 3y minus 4yx equals 3x plus 7. Note, as you move a term from one side to the other, we switch their signs. So now that we have all the y variables on one side, we can now take out the GCF and factor with y. We have y 3 minus 4x equals 3x plus 7. Now, to get y by itself, we divide both sides by 3 minus 4x. So, y 3 minus 4 over 3 minus 4x equals 3x plus 7 over 3 minus 4x is equals to y equals 3x plus 7 over 3 minus 4x. And so, the inverse of the function is 3x plus 7 over 3 minus 4x. Let's find the inverse of the function of square root of x plus 2 minus 5 by using the same process we replace f of x with y. So, y equals square root of x plus 2 minus 5. Then switch the x and y's, then solve for y. So, we have x plus 5 equals square root of y plus 2. Now, we have to get rid of the square root by getting the square of both sides of the equation. x plus 5 times x plus 5 equals square root of y plus 2. So, on the left side, we have x plus 5 multiplied by itself, and on the right, using the FOIL method, we simply have y plus 2. So, we have x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals y plus 2. So the last thing we need to do is subtract both sides by 2. Now we have x squared plus 10x plus 23 equals y. So therefore, the inverse of the function is x squared plus 10x plus 23. Well, that ends our discussion. I hope you understood the lesson about inverse function and the given examples provided for you. Again, I am Shannon Larson Tinapay, together with our scriptwriter Alex Juliana Aviles and our video editor Trisha Melody Tangkawan. Thank you for watching and have a great day.